What's going on, good folk of the internet? IG here again today. It's time to do some more tidbits. We haven't done one in a while. And there's been a lot of new stuff that's happened. Uh, not just Linux specific stuff, but with a bit of a Linux spin on things. So, if you're not familiar with how tidbits work, this is a show where I talk about stuff that I found interesting over the last week or so, and, uh, and put it all together and serve it up for you guys. And then we have our random Linux distro and random Linux YouTuber of the day. So let's get into this. So first up, we're gonna excuse my crazy hair. All right, I need to move on. Second up, we had a really big tech event uh, in, the, in the tech world, and that was from Microsoft. Uh, they, had quite a, uh, they had quite a show in terms of the new stuff that they wanted to bring to the table, new hardware categories, uh, new devices, new phones, that kind of thing. Uh, but the ones that really stood out to me were, uh, were both the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book. Now, both of these, if you cruise through comment sections of any of these bits of hardware through the internet, you'll see at least a couple of people saying, can't wait to install Linux on this. And, uh, and I personally think that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Obviously, when it gets to the point where a company like Microsoft that it's had a bit of a rocky relationship uh, with people that like to use alternative operating systems, when it gets to the point that we can all kind of acknowledge that that's actually some pretty dope stuff, uh, that yeah, we can all enjoy it a little bit more. But basically, here's the rundown for the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book, and this is what's gotten me interested. First of all, we've got six gen Intel processors, and we're starting to see some good kernel development in that regard. Uh, also, the, obviously, the continued e evolution of touch. Uh, touch interfaces, I think, work really well now on Plasma 5, and Unity, to an extent, uh, it's not quite as scalable as what I found Plasma 5 to be, but with these devices, in terms of battery life, in terms of uh, the kind of performance you'll be able to get out of them, and also just the sheer screen resolutions that some of these are pushing, it is crazy. So my next biggest thought is, okay, what's gonna happen with uh, high pixel density displays and the Linux ecosystem? Because I feel like this is one area where we can, uh, where either the Linux community can really rise or fall on this point, because displays are getting crispier and crispier and crispier. And yeah, hardware support is a little bit sketchy. Well, not hardware support. The front end user interface support is a little bit sketchy. It's getting there, but it's 2015 and these high pixel density displays are gonna be around for a while, so this needs to happen. Um, so yeah, Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book really got me excited. And if you haven't seen what these things are capable of, then, uh, then I definitely go, uh, like I definitely recommend go and watch the event that they did. Because um, all kidding aside, I honestly think they probably got the Tech Event of the Year award in my book anyway, amongst the big technology vendors out there. So let's move on to new stuff in the Linux world, such as Manjaro. So Manjaro had their new release. Obviously Manjaro is a rolling release, but every now and again they push out a major update that, gives every, that pulls everyone back to the same page and gives new users an opportunity to jump on the ship after all the improvements have been made. So, obviously, having, having Manjaro have a new release, it also means we get quite a few distributions that are based off Manjaro get a bit of a spec bump as well. And probably one of my favorites of those is Netrunner, Netrunner Rolling. So they've put out their updated release for their KDE Plasma 5 goodness. We've got a lot of Plasma goodness in this latest version of Netrunner, including Plasma Desktop 5.4.1. We've got the Linux kernel 4.1.9 and uh, number fives in pretty much everything else. VirtualBox 5, LibreOffice 5, a lot of up to spec stuff, which is really great to see. So that's probably one of my favorites that has come out of the whole Manjaro update. But of course, if you're a Manjaro user, you already know that. And if you're not, then go and check out some Manjaro videos because I think they're a really good distribution for the middle ground user that wants to get a little bit more into Linux. So yes, there's lots of new type stuff and things to celebrate in the tech world at the moment. And, uh, and I'm really excited to see some of these new products in, in the hand would be great. Anyway, we're gonna move on. So the Linux distro of the day, it's not really gonna be a Linux distro this time, just gonna put that out there. What I'm gonna do is uh, not only mention a Linux distro every now and again, but I'm also gonna start mentioning an open source project that I think is really cool. 
that could deserve a bit of your guys' attention. And uh, the first one to kick this all off is something that's very near and dear to my heart, and that is video editing. Um, because I make videos, um, I've always appreciated a great video editor. And uh, this one has been in its uh, infancy and it's been available for quite some time, uh, but it's on the verge of having a huge big update. And uh, it's been in development for goodness knows how long now, and it is OpenShot 2.0. OpenShot Video Editor is a fantastic video editor that if you have not checked it out before on your running Linux, definitely go check it out because it's one of the more user-friendly uh, video editors out there. It has great compatibility with a lot of different codecs and media types and has a very intuitive user interface. And the version 2.0 that is coming is going to be immense uh, for the open source software world in terms of putting creative software on the map. Uh, within the open source community. So definitely go and check it out. The developer's name is Jonathan Thomas, I believe, and, uh, and he's been slaving away at OpenShot 2.0 for a long time. They had a Kickstarter project, which was pretty successful, I think, uh, about two years ago, and uh, OpenShot 2.0 will be coming to Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, all under GPL licensing, which I think is fantastic. So go check that out. And second of all, we have our random Linux distro, uh, random Linux YouTuber of the day, and that's Sneaky Linux. Sneaky Linux has been one of the, one of the consistent, uh, stable partners of the Linux on YouTube project for I don't know how long now. If you haven't heard of Sneaky Linux, he does a lot of those really random, quirky, uh, very lightweight, very um, eccentric Linux distributions out there. And uh, he's literally got hundreds of videos. He's a ball to watch. Uh, he's got some great content there, so go and check him out and give him some likes. That'll be all from me guys. This has been a long rambly kind of video. I will see you all in the very next video. Otherwise it'd be just be awkward. All right, catch you later guys. You can find me on social networks. Links down in the description to stuff I've talked about. Peace out.